All right, YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today, guys, we'll be talking about, yes, you guessed it, we will talk about the cash tiers. Now, the reason for or for this is we are in the month of July and typically cash tier is just around the corner waiting for it to be updated into Macedo. But beforehand, I'm going to talk about oh, some of the uh, core things that is really debatable in Reddit or even in some of the groups that I am in for Macedo. So we are going to talk about uh, the cash tiers in general. What do they do? For all those people who, has, who don't know about the archetype, so this is one of the videos that you can um, check it out. If they are broken or not, typically in my own opinion, it's not, but we'll talk about it in a bit. So cards in the main deck, we'll talk about it. Cards in the extra deck, um, how can they be stopped? A quick glance on what um, cards to use to go up against Kashtiras, and typically what will happen once they come out. So typically a preemptive banis for that matter. So, right off the bat, <clears throat> we'll be talking about Kashtira's um, release date. It's typically on the first or second week of the first month since we already got the information that Kashtira is going to be coming out. So, last month, we already have a new selection pack for, for that matter. So, I'm guessing it's going to be for this month uh, that Kashtira is going to come out. But that is just like... Um, my own hunch because that usually happens in master though broken or not I would say it is not broken in my own in my own opinion because they can easily be stopped They can easily be interrupted and furthermore they can easily be defeated as any other deck would do But it really just juts down into the cards that you are dealt with during the starting hand in some cases there If they are uninterrupted then typically they're just gonna lock you up in uh, basically your monster and your spell and trap zone so we will try to avoid that. So cars in the main deck, we'll talk about them for like a little bit. I would don't want to like make this into a long video for that matter. So you we have the uh, three important cars that, that you have for the deck: the unicorn, the Fenrir, and the rice heart. The unicorn and the Fenrir has a secondary effect during your opponent's turn. It can banish cards face down. But furthermore, unicorn allows you to search out a uh, Kashtira spell card. We'll talk about the spell cards in a bit. The Fenrir, on the other hand, allows you to gain uh, another Kashtira monster to your hand. So, uh, usually the play here is unicorns get a copy of birth. If you already have another Kashtira monster, whether it's Ogre, the Scareclaw, or even the Fenrir itself, just normal summon it because I think most of the Kashira effects are special summoned. So you only have um, one normal summon during that turn, which is basically what birth is used for. We'll talk about birth in a bit. And lastly, for the uh, Rice Heart, this is usually used um, after your Exe summon, which is either the Rice Heart or the Shangri La is on the field. So once they are face up on the field, you'll use the effect of Rice Heart. Uh, prompt effect, banish one Kashira card from your deck uh, to the banished pile, and then use the effect of the Exe monster to block out some of the zones that your opponent is actually using. So that's the typical play right there. Furthermore, the Ogre and the Kashira has just typically uh, an effect that can spell summon itself to the field, giving you an additional body into an Exe summon. So yeah, that's usually a play. You can either, you can go for a Diablosis after the after the Shangri-La is summoned. Those are the important cards. Mainly the Unicorn and Defender is your ace in the hole for this uh, type of deck. Spell cards, the Theosis, uh, you can search this out with the uh, Unicorn. Theosis is typically just spell summon one Kashira monster from your deck to your side of the field. Of course, that with a different attribute, you need to summon it to the field. So be careful with that. The Birth, on the other hand, once this is face up on the field, you can normal summon one level 7 monster without even tributing it. So that's really good for a uh, Castria deck. And this is typically not for just Castrias. It doesn't state here. You can, uh, you can normal summon one level 7 monster without tributing it. So that's a really good um, effect right there. And it is very generic. Also, the secondary effect for this is you can well summon another Castria monster from the graveyard or from the banished pile. Uh, this is usually paired up with the Arise Heart. You banish, if you don't have a copy of any Kashira monster, you just use the, the Arise Heart effect. Banish one Kashira monster. Uh, usually, uh, people go for the Unicorn or Defender Banish. Use the effect of Birth. They get a, the, the monster back to the field and then prompt the effect, getting a hold of another monster or another spell card. So it's either one of those plays right there. Or typically, if you have the Unicorn or Defender on your starting hand, you go for the Ogre or even the Kashira Scareclaw. For the field spell, on the other hand, we are using just one, or basically, I'm just using one copy for this. I tried testing this out in the Edo Pearl. So far, it's very promising. If you're going first and uninterrupted, uh, you can actually lock your opponent out with uh, nine zones in total. For the sake of this video, I'm just using one copy of this. I've seen some other builds that they are using two copies at max. 
not more than that. But yeah, so far, one copy is just enough for this deck. Trap cards, on the other hand, we have Big Bang and Preparations. Preparations, once face up on the field, you can look at your opponent's hand, and if you do, banish one card face down. So that's another effect right there to prompt the effect of the Shangri-La. The Big Bang, on the other hand, you need to banish this. It has a good floating effect. It can detach one Material or Castira monster from one Castira Exe monster in the field. So usually your targets here is for the Arise Heart. Because Arise Heart, we'll talk about it, it basically can um, get a hold of any monster that is on the Banish Pile and just add it into its material. Typically, you want to go with your own Castira monster attached to it from the Banish Zone. And then you go for Big Bang, detach that Castira monster back to the hand, and then you can spell summon one Castira monster from your hand. Uh, if ever you attach Fenrir from the Banish Zone, detach it with the Big Bang, uh, get add it to your hand, and then spell summon it once more to prompt the effect get a hold of another Castira monster. Really, really good. Um, so that's basically the overview of what the main Castira cards can do. Extra deck monsters, there are only like three monsters significant for this deck, two of which is a Castira monster, one of which is banned in the TCG, but it is very useful. First and foremost, we'll go with the boss monster, Arise Heart. Attach one material from, uh, well, any card from the banished pile. Either it's in your opponent's side or yours, you can attach it to this card. But usually you go with your side, of course, because you will add a monster basically with a big bang later on. It gains an ability, you can detach three materials from this card and target one card in the field, banish it face down. So it prompts another effect as well for the Shangri-La. Shangri-La is on, on the other hand, is one of the best things that came out for this, for this um, archetype. And by far, it is somewhat broken in a sense. As long as it meets the criteria of its effect, it can lock out most of the zones for your opponent. Like I said, once a card is banished, I think one card is banished, you can prompt the effect of this monster and then pinpoint one specific zone that your opponent is using. And it's not a hard once per turn or even a soft once per turn. So sky's the limit. The last Exe monster that I'm going to talk about is the Diablosis. So this was actually banned on a couple of banlists ago or two banlists ago because of its effect that can that can search out one monster from the extra deck and then banish it face down. Once it prompts the effect, it will prompt the effect of the Shangri-La. And then during that specific turn, you can banish uh, cards from the top of your opponent's deck face down equal to their face down banish cards. So that is a strong effect right there. The extra deck, well, you might be noticing there, we are using 15 monsters. We, they are mostly situational. The important cards are the ones I've, that I've talked about. The reason for this is because some of the materials here you can use for Prosperity. And Prosperity is a really good excavator to your Castrial monsters. Sadly, we, in Master though, we are just using one copy of this, so basically use this to its full potential. I've seen some other people use this on three copies on some of the tournaments, but yeah, since we are uh, limited to one copy for, for Prosperity, then go for it. Uh, what else? Uh, I think that's basically it. The other Exe monsters are highly situational. You can use it to your own strategy, but other than that, that's basically it. Um, with regards to the ban list, or uh, well, basically, how can these cards be stopped? It's it can easily be negated by a hand trap like Ash Blossom, Baxi, Effect Bailer, and Imperm. We have also Drill and Lockbird, and some of some other trap cards as well that forbids your opponent from banishing cards. With regards to the ban list, we will have a preemptive ban list like any other new selection pack we have, and also new archetypes added into Mashadol, just like for the tier elements. We have preemptive ban list, so possibly Fenrir is going to be on two, and oh, Fenrir is going to be on two, and then Unicorn will be on two as well. Or basically, Fenrir is going to be one, just a hunch, but I have a big feeling that it's just going to be on two. Unicorn, on the other hand, it's basically on two for its potential of searching out the, the spell cards. A Rise Heart, uh, Rise Heart will be on three copies, I'm pretty sure, and the other Castrial Monsters is basically on three copies max. For the extra deck monsters, I think. Their uh, their limit is only two copies on on every deck that I've seen by far. Having to lock this onto one copy would be somewhat detrimental for the deck. I would say detrimental, but it would be like lessening the capability of the Kashtira. With regards to Shangri La, I think it would be detrimental if you just be using one copy. So uh, typically going for semi limited on this, but even so, people are just gonna be using two copies on their decks anyways. But yeah, that is my own opinion for the ban list or the, the preemptive ban list for the Kashira. Hopefully this will be in Master Duel in a couple of weeks from now. Tell me your thoughts about the deck. Tell me your thoughts about the archetype. Is it broken or not? For me, it's not. Comment down below with regards to your reaction and I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep safe, good luck, and like and subscribe for more content. Goodbye.